information um, causes you to be comfortable. And when you get comfortable, you get stuck in mediocrity. We've been talking about um, going from transitioning to transformation, from transitioning to transformation. I'm just going to give a quick recap on what intimidation is. Intimidation is simply this, something or someone that causes or brings you a fear. And when that fear comes, it sets you in a place that you are too afraid to step out your comfort zone, set, keeping you in that comfort ever, er, area. And once you get stuck in that comfort area, that's what mediocrity is. Uh, sets in. We get mediocre because we start making excuses or we take on what other people believe and what they say because we make it fit because we are intimidated, intimidated of change or intimidate of, intimidated of the unknown. And this happens a lot of times. Let me take my little thing off so y'all can see me good. So, um, and I'm not, I know I'm not broadcasting from my normal place today, but it's okay. I really want to talk about this and I had to, um, it was good that I didn't come on last week because even with me, intimidation can cause you to dummy down. Tara, what do you mean when you say that? You become intimidated on what people may think or what people may say or how they feel or you're going to step on somebody's toes or you're going to offend somebody because of who you are. That's intimidation, fear. That's all it is. So I had to reevaluate myself as I'm talking about intimidation and being comfortable and being stuck in mediocrity. I had to reevaluate myself because, again, I have a standard that I live by. That's it. Now, let me say this because I don't want anybody to send me. Don't, don't, don't send me an email. Don't put me, don't, don't try to throw some shade on Facebook or Instagram. Let me say this. I am not perfect. I don't claim to be perfect. I had on a shirt the other day. I'm saved enough to pray for you, but it said, I think it said, I'm holy and I'm saved enough. I'm saved enough to save you, but I'm holy enough to swing on you. <laughs> now, and I had to kind of reevaluate that shirt because this lady saw. She was like, "Let me see that shirt," and I was like, "Ah." So, and and when I say that, I mean this because, of course, Christianity has a bad rap. It has a bad rap. Do I do everything right? No, and no, and and no, and no, and no, and no, and no again. <laughs> but my purpose, my strive. My intent, my practice is to follow the word of God line by line, precept by precept, so that my life reflects what the word says. I try not to put myself in situations where it's going to cause my flesh or what Tara wants to do to rise up so I make the word of God um, none avoid or make his name look bad because I'm professing to be a, um, a follower of Christ. Now I said all that to say this, cause intimidation, remember I said I had to reevaluate, reevaluate my life when I'm teach, when for me to teach you this, because so often, because I am a practical strategist um, and I have a practical strategic approach in my counseling and in my life coaching, I cannot forget my standard, which is the word of God. In the past, talking about intimidation, in the past, I had to dummy down or I felt like I had to dummy down because of the standard that I live by or I was attempting to live by or striving to live by because I didn't want to hurt nobody's feelings. You know, I don't want to hurt anybody. And my intent is never to hurt your feelings, but my tent is always to push you, push you to change. And sometimes when I when 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 my when your intent is to push people to change, to transition and transform, you get offended because you're not ready to change. So my intent, so everything I do, the Bible says do it out, the word of God says do it out of love. So I do it out of love because I understand, not I know. Not I have knowledge, but I have understanding on that we are three dimensional and we live in a three dimensional world and nothing is never 
and what it seems to be because it's a three-dimensional world that we live in so with that understanding i teach from that letter that level i uh counsel from that level and i coach from that understanding so an intimidation in the past and some be and if some of you guys that are following me sometimes you know you've done me down because oh i don't want to hurt it i don't want to step on anybody's toes well let me tell you something what i had to learn a long time ago we have been taught that if we confront someone that that's going to cause some confusion or that's going to cause some strife that's not true all. now sometimes it will <laughs> depends on how you confront it but sometimes and i'm going to say sometimes i'm going to say 80 percent of the time if your intent is right and you have to confront something or someone in your life that is causing strife or discord pain or discomfort in your life and you doing it out of the right intent and the right purpose being confrontational is necessary because and the reason it's necessary is this because some things will never change listen to me unless you confront it some things will never change unless you confront it sometimes we get taught that we got to sweep stuff up on the world or that's just how people are or it's always been this way or we sit and we talk about it we complain about you know this person's doing this or this situation is this way and you know i'm tired of this but we never confront it listen in love we confront things out of anger and when you confront them out of anger when you are defensive you get defensiveness back so you never get a resolve when you confront things from that dimension so when you are trying to move forward transition or transform or confront something that is causing you discord pain discomfort anxiety frustration the first thing you have to do is get an understanding because see if you're angry and you're trying to confront something only thing that's gonna come out is anger and you're gonna have a bunch of confusion you have to settle within your mind your psyche first your mind and your psyche first that hey i understand exactly what this is where this thing or this person or these persons are coming from i understand how it has affected me how it is affecting me and how it will continue to affect me unless i confront it so once you get an understanding and you're settled in that understanding because sometimes you can get an understanding and then when you do the conversation come up all those emotions all those feelings come back up and you angry again you're not ready to confront because only thing you're gonna only energy you're gonna put out is a defensive energy and you're not ready to confront it and sometimes it takes years to for you yourself to become to, to understand in your psyche that, hey, I'm ready to confront this. I've dealt with it enough that when I talk about it, I'm not moved about it because I have a clear understanding. So once you get that understanding about things, then you can confront them. Then you can confront them. But if not, you stay scared. And I always talk about being in that conundrum. You, be in, become, you, you stay in this cycle because, oh, when I said something before and then it started an argument and then we did, we wasn't speaking or um, it, got a, it caused some confusion or whatever it was or whatever it is. I hope you guys can hear me. I got a new mic on, so I hope y'all can hear me good. <laughs> hope I'm not talking in vain. Um, so we get stuck there and then when it's time to, when we dealt with it ourselves and it's time to go back and revisit, we get intimidated because we remember the experiences from the past, from the last time we did it. So what happens is we get intimidated. Then we say, we start making excuses. We get comfortable. Oh, you know what? If I say something, they're not going to change. Mm -mm. They just like this. They never going to change. 
It's not, not going to do anything but make me mad. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You know exactly what I'm talking about. We make excuses for not saying stuff. And then we start that cycle again. We get angry. We start reliving those negative emotions. And then we get stuck in mediocrity. And we live an entire life in mediocrity and not evolving into the relationships and to the jobs and to the persons and to the health that we were created or destined to be in. And it all it's all because of we get intimidated. You know, if something goes wrong one time in our life, we have a couple of bad experiences. You know, we are creatures that we live off of experiences. What happened that time and I did it again and I did it again. And every time I do it, it's a negative experience. Well, guess what? It may have been, but it may have been a negative experience because you came from a negative place. May have been a it may have been a negative experience because you came, you approached it from a, with a negative energy, with a defensiveness. So once you get healed, because I talk about being healed a lot, once you yourself get healed. Not say you here because you know I listen to people all the time. Well, you know, I forgave and I'm healed and this and this. And time somebody say something, all of that stuff come back up and you're not you because we good at lying to ourselves. We can tell ourselves lies. I, I don't know about anybody else, but I, I'm guilty. I'm guilty of telling myself lies, everything all right, and then when something come up, I feel I go through, I relive all of those emotions. That's that comfortable state. That's called comfortability. We start accepting and we and we get stuck in those excuses and you're not OK. You're not OK. You have to be OK with yourself because in the, the word of God says he, the spirit of God, has not given us the spirit because fear, intimidation is a spirit. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of peace, love and a sound mind. So if you are intimidated because of some past experiences or you're intimidated because you have someone has told you some things that about yourself or um, uh, you grew up with low self-esteem or whatever it is, you've had some bad experiences in your health, your relationships, your jobs or whatever it is with your friends, family, whatever it is. If you've experienced that and it hurt you, we are creatures. Remember I say I teach three dimensional. We don't want to hurt. We don't want to hurt physically. We don't want to hurt emotionally. So we put up barriers so that we don't have to hurt. So and with those barriers, we make excuses. I'm not doing that anymore. Mm -mm. She and, and then what we do is we point the finger. Oh, they ain't ready for change. They're going to be like that. They mean and hateful and they may be mean and hateful. They may not be ready for change. But one thing I know, one thing a person cannot and will not, when the truth, not a truth, but when the truth shows up, people change. You all heard that saying, you know, the truth hurts. It does. It only hurts when you're not ready to change. The truth does hurt. When I've been told the truth, got called out on the carpet on some stuff, the first thing I want to do is cuss and raise sand and all this, this, and this, and this. And the only reason I want to do that because you called me out and I knew that they were talking about the truth. <laughs> So you get mad about the truth. But one thing about it, after and, and if you have a if you're dealing with a person with a growth mindset that are because everybody not. Let me just throw this out. Everybody don't want to change. Everybody don't want to change. Everybody does not want change. Everybody want to evolve. People want to just some people just want to stay just where they are. They may talk change, but they not they not gonna walk change. <laughs> they may talk it, but they may not they may not never walk it because change is difficult. So with that, we have to be mindful. Hey, everybody is not gonna be ready to accept. They may not ever change, but when the truth shows up, one thing you cannot deny is the truth. They may not ever acknowledge it to you, but they're going to know, hey, you know what? That was the truth. That was the truth. Because at the end of the day, we can lie to ourselves all day long, all day long. But we ourselves, we know the truth. Unless you have a reprobate mind 
or you are uh you got some type of disorder <laughs> you understand or some some type of learning disability you know the truth about yourself now let me just throw that some people can lie to themselves so long we you know that they disconnect with reality they can lie to themselves so long that they disconnect with reality so with that when they disconnect with reality what happens is this they start believing their lies and once they start believing their lies it takes a lot of truth to break through the lies that they tell themselves or the lies that they have told themselves and sometimes you got to understand some people tell themselves lies because they they create this fantasy world for themselves because they're in so much emotional and psychological pain that reality is is more painful than the lies that they live in they create a, a, a falsehood to to save themselves from the hurt of the reality of their emotional, their mental, psychological reality that they live in their mind. Now, it doesn't mean that that's what's going on, but it's the reality that, that they live in their minds. So to go from, from in, intimidation, intim, and I, you know, I kind of went off a little bit, but intimidation is this. When I told you I was trying to reevaluate myself, I had to make sure, hey, I am who I am. If you don't like me, I'm good with that. I'm not here for everybody. I'm not coming on because truth be told, and I said this a few um, times before, I don't like coming on live. I, you know, I got a big mouth, but I got a big mouth in my own element. I don't like coming on live. And it's a sacrifice for me because I have so many other things that I have going on. So I want to say this, we have, to, I, I, I had to break past being intimidated. Okay. Yeah. This is to the world. Basically social media, everybody gets to see you. Everybody gets to critique you. I'm a little country girl from Augusta, Georgia. I'm country. I don't try to talk proper, proper. And sometimes I create words and I'm okay with that because I'm okay with Tara um but with that i have to um understand that i have people it's that scrutinize me you know that say some negative nasty things and a lot of those people be christians they say they're christian let me just they say they're christians and if you can't find a scripture besides jesus whipped in the bible wouldn't know the word of god if he was to walk up and i'm just gonna say that because a lot of people they call that name and it's just nothing. They live nothing because Christianity uh, following Christ is not a word. It's a lifestyle. Your life should be reflecting Christ, Jesus, the anointed, not your denomination. And that is progressive because you have the word says people, um, you have, it's time for you to stop drinking milk. And we got a lot, we got a lot of, I use this word and I, and I don't want anybody to send me something mentally disabled because you know we used to call them mentally retarded mentally disabled Christians y'all been drinking milk you, you got to proclaim that got saved and you've been drinking milk for 40 years you still drinking on the bottle and the word says that it's time to go from the elementary thing it's time to go from stop drinking the milk of the word to eating the meat of the word Stop drinking the milk. Milk is just to get you nourished. That meat is going to build some strength up in you. You're going to have to chew a little bit more because then you got some teeth to bite. Babies drink milk because they don't have any teeth. They, they can't chew in their digestive system. They can't digest the fullness of what the word of God says. And it's too many people that have been living their lives can't digest the truth the truth of the word the truth of their reality the truth of their health the truth of their relationship because if they digest it if they try to chew on that stuff and they digest the system they don't get sick and mo and then a lot of times you will die so you got to be careful it's time to grow up it's time to go from intimidation stop being intimidated oh lord i'm not my dog on thing y'all <laughs> stop being intimidated about people what people think because people gonna always think some of you 
I don't care. I had to learn, and you know, I said this. If y'all follow me, I wrote on my post. On Sunday night, I was on the bandwagon. I was just on the bandwagon on Sunday. I was, you know, one in my feelings. I was just on the bandwagon because I, you know, it's time out for trying to tiptoe around the truth. Because when someone has something to say to you, they're not going to tiptoe around it. Life not going to tiptoe. I used to teach my kids this, and I'm going to end on this one. You can lie to yourself. You cannot listen. You can live a life that you want to live. But one thing about Professor Life, you're going to have to go through Professor Life class. And if you don't pass Professor Life class, you don't get promoted. Professor Life will kick your butt. He don't have, he don't give retakes. He, he don't give, you know, uh, you don't get a curve cut. You going to pass it or you going to fail it. You going to keep taking it. And Professor Lightheart is it's hard. And it doesn't have to be. Everybody doesn't have to go through that course. If you just listen. I hear so many great people, um, whether they're motivational speakers, pastors, preachers, people on Facebook that give great information. But because you don't like their personality or they said one or two things that hurt your feelings that you didn't come on, that you didn't agree with. Now you shut them down. Honey, it's time to eat some meat. Stop drinking up. The old people used to say, take the titty out your mouth here. Take that titty out your mouth, put drink in that milk, and go ahead and get you some meat so you can chew on it, so you can go from transition to transformation. My time is up. This is your girl, Tara. Make sure you like and share. Um, and we're going to finish it up because we're going to talk about mediocrity next week. We're going into June, but we're going to talk about mediocrity and what happens when you live a life that's mediocre. All right. I'll see you guys next week. Make sure you like and share. Bye.